Hello once again, further progressing with our discussion on innovation with reference to red ocean and blue ocean. Now, we are converging towards a thought process associated with blue ocean and uh, funneling down to how blue ocean tends to be looked upon. Let us discuss the blue ocean framework first of all. So, uh, what, what are the elements which constitutes largely you know the blue ocean perspective. So, first aspect which has to be seen with reference to blue ocean is very interesting which, which we have touched upon uh, in a different form when we refer to uncontested market space. Uh, the, the first aspect says reconstruct market boundaries. How to reconstruct market boundaries? It is very interesting uh, wherein uh, you see up till now our view has been conventionally towards uh, a, a thought which says that there is a market, there is a domain uh, which exists with particular kinds of customers, they have particular kinds of needs and those needs can be seen with particular kinds of wants and, and uh, so many people can address those wants and uh, we also have to enter into that market space and uh, fight for a pie and so on. How to reconstruct market boundaries? That is, that is uh, an important thing to be understood at this uh, moment. So, first aspect, first element to this aspect is look across alternative industries. Now, how to do that is uh, can be can be justifiably suggested through some examples wherein for example, uh, NetJets is a company which uh, went for uh, you know provision of uh, personalized aeroplane service on rental basis you know fractional jet kind of jet ownership you may say. So, you pay for uh, a particular kind of uh, a jet service and you tend to be an owner of that jet and you can utilize it as per uh, your uh, choice and time which uh, and then you do not have to maintain that, you do not have to own that completely, you do not have to hire staff for that and so on, you just are a fractional owner to that. Now, that fractional ownership has gone uh, uh, for another dimension wherein you would find that there are many uh, constructed houses or flats uh, in several cities wherein you are a fractional owner or you have paid for that property and uh, so many people they, they stay whenever uh, as per their choice and that property is utilized as a uh, part time house or let us say a hotel or let us say a motel or what whatsoever. So, so you are uh, a you are a partial owner of that uh, particular kind of uh, property and, and uh, several other things get associated with that from the side of the organization which maintains that. So, for example, uh, you know Docomo uh, it, it went for internet and mobile long back when uh, it came into being. Fab India for example, has always been thinking in terms of how to go for ethnic apparels uh, made by Indian weavers and Indian uh, producers uh, with lots of design element. Uh, which is contemporarily uh, relevant actually and then so Fab India came for you know kind of a different kind of uh, uh, chain of stores uh, providing different kinds of clothing especially with an ethnic kind of or let us say a cultural backdrop and, and uh, uh, you know they, they are into cotton and silk and they then entered into several products as, as such. So, that is and uh, when I look at uh, examples like uh, Khadi Gramudyog, Gandhi Ashram popularly which is uh, uh, you know uh, which is a brand in itself. Uh, when I look at these examples you visit a Gandhi Ashram store or Khadi Gramudyog store you would utilize you would uh, realize that uh, uh, that there are several products which you might not have uh, even heard of. But the quality and uh, the features of those products are exceptional as compared to what you have been looking for uh, 
and uh, then uh, th there is a perspective associated with those products which differentiate uh, them, them automatically as compared to what you have been using up till now. So, uh, they are addressing a newer kind of a usage for either existing uh, segment and reconstructing the market boundaries or they are going for non-users, entirely non-users who are actually oriented towards Khadi products and so on. So, but, but then you would realize that at the end of the day many existing users of different kinds of products, they tend to move uh, towards these kind of products uh, as such. So, looking across alternative industries, that is the first element. Then you go for look across strategic groups within industries. Now, uh, for example, Lexus and Curves is a Texas based fitness company which look towards uh, uh, people who are looking for fitness with a different kind of a perspective. So, uh, you know, the, they had certain different kinds of offerings uh, which existing fitness companies did not have. And uh, uh, looking at uh, again a, a very popular example nowadays, Patanjali, you would uh, look for, uh, you know, uh, Patanjali can definitely suitably fit into this element of looking across strategic groups within the industry wherein Patanjali is producing almost every product uh, which existed in the market in some kind of a form with a natural orientation Ayurveda and uh, you know similar kind of elements associated with that product for customers who have been using several products or they, they have not been using similar kinds of products more or less, but, but there is a diminishing line between uh, the you know, thin line between uh, these two elements in this example, but they are you know uh, an apt example of wherein you look across strategic groups within that industry and, and now they have created a blue ocean perspective for themselves which I will demonstrate in uh, my subsequent discussion as well. Then you come for look across the chain of buyers, who are the buyers associated with a particular kind of a sequence and uh, whom you can you know think in terms of picking up from that sequence kind of. So, Novo Nordisk is one of the example, uh, this uh, Danish insulin producer who focused not on influences but buyers and produced Novo Pen actually. So, technological advantage which this company utilized. Uh, for administering the drug uh, made their drug more popular as compared to so because because uh, uh, insulin uh, you know uh, uh, has to be regularly used by diabetics uh, and uh, then if you uh, you know that they had to depend upon uh, someone to administer that insulin uh, in let us say injectable form if it is to be utilized like that. So, Novo Nordisk uh, thought of that they might not be differentiating the product, but they might be differentiating the uh, facilitation of the usage of that product and which was very thoughtful because which which differentiated them uh, entirely as far as you know the whole lot goes. Then we can talk of Crocin as well, it became a uh, prescription, uh, it, it became uh, over the counter drug from a prescription based drug and uh, people utilize it to its advantage as far as you know, headaches and fevers and those kind of things they go. Then books as in Scholastic, Scholastic is, a, is an organization which I have seen that they go to schools and contact. Uh, children uh, with the help of their teachers and they offer several kinds of books and uh, you know they, they directly address their segment uh, this this uh, this segment with a different kind of uh, perspective. So, earlier children they had a prescription or uh, you know a kind of suggestion from uh, 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 the teacher's side or the parent's side and then they used to subscribe to the books basically or uh, they used to purchase the books or they, they might have got this idea of uh, you know uh, what they would find in a particular kind of a book because of their peer influence also. But Scholastic went for uh, a different kind of an orientation by educating children towards uh, what their offerings are. Kindle is definitely one of those examples wherein uh, you can you can access thousands of books through net or, or Kindle has Kindle editions also and so on. So, reconstructing market boundaries. Now, the second element is looking across complementary products and service offerings. 
Now that is that is uh, again a wonderful thought basically. For example, if I look at this program MBA program which is being offered by hundreds of uh, B schools existing in uh, this country and then uh, you, once you go abroad more or less everyone is offering a similar kind of a program and orientation. Student gets perplexed on what, what difference they would get and then student tends to culminate everything in terms of the placements. B schools are not placement agencies. They uh, are there to impart education which has to be utilized in multiple forms later on for uh, not only progressing the career of a particular kind of a person uh, or, or let us say an aspirant, but also for uh, you know making the difference to this world through that person. So, th that has to be looked uh, entirely with a different kind of a perspective, but fundamentally when you do not have that kind of a differentiation then uh, ultimately you tend to associate that thing with uh, you know the, the ultimate output which is job. We will talk about it later on. But uh, then once you say that you are uh, you try to look across complementary products and service offerings then education can be uh, a wonderful example wherein uh, you know education offerings have been looked upon with the perspective of uh, many complementary products that what kind of a material you would access what kind of a content base you would access what kind of an ambience and infrastructure you would have what kind of uh, you know computers we would provide what kind of uh, other elements you would have and, and so on. So, there there are so many things which are complementary to uh, mm. what you are offering in terms of um, education for example. And uh, then you have Bedi cities uh, now uh, which have complementary uh, experiences associated with when a patient gets admit to that uh, particular hospital. Uh, there are restaurants which offer different kinds of complementary services associated with when you visit a restaurant. There are several uh, hotels who tend uh, who have, have converted themselves into a resort and experience based kind of a stay. So, uh, now business hotels are different and uh, you know individual work based hotels are uh, different and then entertainment based hotels are different and entertainment hotels have converted themselves into a, a resort kind of a scene wherein you go for. Uh, leisure and relax with your family and so on and then again there is further differentiation in that category as well. So, look across complementary products which can be thought of with a particular kind of an offering which you are making. Look across emotional or functional appeals to buyer. Now, this is, this is very very important when uh, especially when in today's context whole of the world acknowledges that emotional appeal to the buyers. Uh, takes you further and it, it takes you towards more customer loyalty and so on and marketing 3.0 has aptly demonstrated that kind of a thing and uh, we have also been working on a project for past 7, 8 years wherein spirituality as a context for market development and market stabilization uh, has been referred to as a very important uh, perspective to be uh, you know looked upon uh, with reference to stabilizing the market situation uh, uh, that is uh, and then uh, it's it's beyond the scope of this discussion to talk about that but uh, you, you can refer to that later on so uh, look across emotional or functional appeals swatch they definitely try to do that as far as their watches go simex they went ahead when they said that they are selling a dream rather than selling a cement uh, just the cement and uh, they tried to incorporate uh, uh, you know an advice or support to uh, their customers in constructing their houses and maintaining their houses and converting cement kind of a product into a dream structure which buyers have been uh, looking at. So, that is that is very interesting to learn that a cement company goes ahead with supporting their they, they even went ahead uh, with you know supporting them uh, with some installments and you know uh, financial uh, support uh, through some other agencies or uh, businesses to, to uh, you know give them an advantage to uh, you know uh, advantage to the immediate cost which they require to construct their houses or to maintain their houses and so on. Uh, ACC Cement is also doing that and uh, they are you know the, the one of their advertisements uh, I, I remember is wherein you know someone is constructing a house in deeper in mountains somewhere in uh, Ladakh for example and uh, ACC Cement uh, suggests that they went uh, as far as that place and actually advised uh, 
uh, not only selling the cement to that customer, but also advising on that what kind of a house can be aptly constructed here and so on. So, um, and I remember uh, uh, an example of uh, wherein uh, Prahlad suggested in uh, Fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, C. K. Prahlad's uh, most known work, uh, wherein he uh, advised uh, probably uh, Cimex or some other company to produce a cement based paste which can be utilized for you know uh, flooring the uh, uh, temporary hutments or houses which were uh, being floored by let us say cow dung or mud only. So, that paste was more hygienic and cost effective and uh, it, it became um, an immediate success as far as the product offering goes. So, that, that example uh, I remember it is it is quite relevant in this context. Then look across time, look beyond a certain framework, imagine big. For example, existence of European Union has been referred to with this kind of a perspective and uh, you know uh, when, when smaller countries they were having uh, small kind of uh, economic structures and economic offerings and they were although they were uh, dependent upon each other for uh, many of their value chains and, and uh, you know their trade and businesses and then they uh, you know the distances were less and uh, frequently one had to go from this place to that place. So, currency exchanges and those kind of issues were there. So, European Union came into being and uh, today we realize that uh, it has uh, although it is being debated upon now, but uh, we realize that it actually uh, was looking across time. If, if somehow this can be done in the matter of several other countries which, which can have this kind of a trade relationship and uh, universalization of currency, it can be uh, a wonderful thought which can propel larger business and rationalize the irrelevant competition between those countries as such. So, th that is that is a wonderful thought uh, related to that. Then comes in Apple's downloadable music as we have seen kind of. So, looking across time you know how devices can be utilized for whatever we tend to do. Today, the kind of uh, mobile services we have, the service providers are going for the, the technological support to the customers, wherein customers can download almost everything on, uh, on their mobiles and uh, that can be utilized. Uh, uh, sometimes I feel that GPS systems and uh, you know Google Maps and uh, these kind of things which have emerged now, they have changed the way. Uh, we used to roam around kind of uh, you, you can now fearlessly go anywhere basically and you have a map and a direction uh, in your uh, you know site and, and you do not have to ask directions from someone. Uh, I, I remember a few years back uh, when, when you uh, used to go uh, to places and especially when you entered a new city you had to ask for directions so many times uh, you know kind of stopping by and asking directions from people who have been passing by and people. Uh, usually were considerate because everyone was passing through this kind of a phase. But today when you ask for direction people look at you sometimes strangely when you know uh, someone tends to suggest uh, that do not you have uh, uh, you know kind of GPS system with you. So, that is again looking across uh, time and perspective. How does it happen? And it is very important to learn that how does it happen. So, uh, what what are the tools or let us say what is the methodology to propel this kind of a thing which which we have just seen. I will just reiterate, uh, reiterate that for you that looking across alternative industries, looking across strategic groups within the industries, looking across the chain of buyers, looking across the complementary products, looking across emotional or functional appeal appeals to the buyers and looking across time. So, how uh, this can be achieved largely and the key statement is that focus on big picture and not the numbers, do some exercise. What is the big picture? Now, that big picture I have referred to in our earlier discussions mildly which says that once you have concern and no skepticism and you are not thinking in terms of generating business with relevance to your own lifetime and profitability which you would like to earn that is somehow referred to as big picture as I fondly refer to Jamshed ji's thought of entering into steel business and power business 
although it was relevant with reference to that particular time but he could have chosen to go for other businesses which could have uh, fetched larger profits to him and that too in immediate terms but he chose to think in terms of uh, manufacturing steel and uh, that too when you did not have metallurgical engineers in india that too you do not have mining specialist you did not have mining specialist in india so he went all along to us to uh, to uh, you know bring in metallurgical and mining engineers to india and with their support and uh, help uh, although he could not be a part of that journey uh, sir dora uh, was uh, instrumental in developing uh, the first steel plant of india in jamshedpur Uh, but uh, there you see there is an aspect of looking at big picture because uh, as as uh, i have read in the literature uh, uh, that uh, jamshed ji uh, uh, heard a statement somewhere or read a statement somewhere by thomas carlyle which says that uh, country which has the steel has the gold so he could imagine that how important steel is for as far as infrastructural development of a country goes and uh, looking at that with an innovative and entrepreneurial perspective uh, he sort of uh, thought about uh, you know a blue ocean uh, which could um, you know uh, which can be relevantly seen uh, with reference to the discussion we are having and specially with context to the reference of focus on big picture and not the numbers and this statement has an element of visual awakening now what is visual awakening visual awakening is observe changes and differences which are evolving in due course of time now th th there there are two sides to it one you can take the advantage of the changes which are happening for example we often talk about cultural changes which are happening in india the youth is going to uh, through a different uh, cultural demonstration they tend to be more free as compared to you know the the social structure and boundaries which were existing earlier so uh, one one uh, an organization can definitely take the advantage of whatever changes uh, are evolving so that is that is one part but that is not i am referring to i am referring to uh, observing changes with reference to developing the market as such and what what are the uh, you know customer choices which are ev evolving how technology is behaving how things are moving uh, and in what direction we are going actually as far as you know technological adoption goes or let's say uh, other forms of adoption goes and and what are the you know socio political situation which which, uh, which is happening how ec economy is behaving and so on then uh, one can think in terms of uh, visual exploration field visits observe yourself and that is the most important part which we tend to do especially uh, you know people who want to rise who are studying who are actually uh, you know uh, seeking education for uh, the development their own development as well as this uh, development of uh, the society and their larger role in the society later on they should be talking to people attending as many discussions and forums and seminars as they can and not uh, not uh, on only on virtual platforms but uh, going to people going to places talking to people on different aspects of what is happening around so uh, one can think of as i as i uh, suggested earlier that uh, you know we went for uh, forest bio residue based bricketing that came in because we talked to thousands of people for that as i refer to uh, the aspect of uh, ganges we could address as solutions later on it was because we could talk to people about what they are thinking in terms of uh, that where should we go and how should we curtail the problem of uh, you know water quality depletion or or so many other problems which are uh, related to ganges right now then uh, similarly uh, it it uh, progresses into visual visual strategy fair now visual strategy fair is associated with world cafes wherein you talk to people with different uh, backdrops with different uh, understanding even sometimes uh, or many a times with with uh, different cultural backdrops as well and then you tend to collate uh, these kind of uh, things together mm, 
while talking about these i remember about mr subhash sharma and uh, 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 mr sampuran singh ji who uh, along with their two other colleagues who are no more in this world all these four people they went around this world in 1971 on enfield motorcycles so they traveled across almost uh, 65 countries and uh, you know travel a distance of 165000 kilometers plus uh, uh, without any financial support largely uh, their organization uh, tatas they supported them with their salaries definitely as they uh, told us uh, and and uh, they did not have money uh, for themselves on the way you know and and uh, they did not have directional support or something but but they they had courage they moved they were the first people to cross sahara desert on motorcycle uh and uh, you see but but why i am referring to those people and their journey right now is that when i asked mr subhash sharma and uh, mr sampuran singh ji uh that what did you learn so you see uh, the learning was immense and uh, that is uh, you know uh, definitely aptly associated with visual exploration and visual strategy fair visual communication you know communication among peers and visual um, awakening observing changes which are going around and interestingly uh, you know before i end this discussion i would tell you that i asked them two three questions you know uh, i said that uh, can you tell me that what is the kind of difference world uh, has gained in due course of time and uh, or or how different the world now is Uh, as compared to what you have seen during those days and how different are the people in different countries and the answer was that world has not changed at all the speed of doing things has changed but world has not changed at all world is almost the same what we have witnessed and what we are witnessing now and uh, people they said are almost similar because there are good people there are bad people uh, there are happy people there are sad people kind of but but people are more or less more or less uh, same everywhere and uh, it is because of good people this world runs and it is because those kind of good people they could go through that journey that is what they told me now just uh, you know kind of expanding the discussion to uh, the the levels of what we have seen i would uh, uh, take this in my further uh, uh, you know kind of uh, demonstration of how blue ocean strategy can be executed thank you